gosh. Uh, Dan, do you think the Cowboys' loss is a bad sign moving forward? No, it's a, not a bad sign. It, this was a bad game by Dallas. Now, there are questions that <laughs> – I can't even look at them. There are questions that linger, kind of what happened last week. And this is me being serious now, unfortunately. I w so the Wednesday Travon Diggs injury matters as a as a overall part of this conversation. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They, yeah. he, to sit there and say that this isn't a significant loss to this football team, both on the field and off the field, it isn't accurate. So, like, just number one, the, the injury happens on a Wednesday of a road game. That, that all of a sudden now, what your defensive plan is and how you're going to defend that team is completely different. It's not just plug and play. So they got to figure out who they are and who they can be without Trevon. Like, if we took Darius Slay off the Philadelphia Eagles, we're having a very different conversation about their defense. If we took a Denzel Ward off the Cleveland Browns, who have one of the best defenses in football this year, we're having a different conversation about that team. So I think, like, it's, it, is a, it is a bad game, but we have to figure out, and Dan Quinn's got to show us who this defense is going to be without Trayvon. And then the mentality of it, because part of this is – you know, you watch this defense play the first two weeks, and there was this, this moxie and this swagger and this, like, almost trying to embarrass the other team. And that comes from knowing how good you are. And that got cracked just a little bit midweek. And so, bad game, but I want to see who they are without Trayvon. Number two, how they handle some of the things that defensively they've got to get figured out. But this is the broader part for me is, I think what happened last week could be the best thing that could have happened to, to Dallas. So the first two weeks, they skunk both teams, essentially. And there's no competition get thrown their way. And the narrative around this week, or the conversation around this week, this football team was in, in the red zone. And that's where I want to specifically go. Right now, this football team's not what it should be in the red zone. And that's because Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. If this football team is going to be the best team in the NFL like it was before that injury, Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb got to become Tony Romo and Des Bryant. Stephen A. Kimberly, <laughs> hear me. Stephen. I'm trying to like. I, I actually, I'm okay. enthralled by it. Right, you know what I was out. thinking Just in my it. head? I'm like, Dan's a really good analyst. Thank you. I swear. Thank you. Carry on. Here, here's my point with their red zone stuff. CeeDee Lamb has two red zone targets. That means they've thrown him the ball twice mm -hmm. in three weeks. Jake Ferguson has eight. Brandon Cooks has six. They ain't throwing <laughs> C.D. Lamb to football. <laughs> if Des Bryant was there, if, you know, if Des you know Bryant the show was there, is over at noon, right? If just, Des Bryant was you know. there, mm -hmm. they would be throwing Des Bryant to football. That's the biggest thing that they got to get figured out. So, like, bad sign, uh, bad game, but that to me is the bad sign that they're not throwing C.D. Lamb to football in the red zone. Couple of things. Let me make this. Let me let, let, let me just get this out of the way. First of all, Molly, let me say something to you. Okay, you know what? You're 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 a damn good host. Damn good host. Great. You want a cookie? Of course, you're a great host. That's why you're hosting the show. So no, tell him I'm Dan Lowe. The Dan way Olofsky. he breaks down right, I, I was football. Like, it's, it's, such, it's, it's such great analysis. Yeah, Whatever. that's why he's on. That's why he's here. That's why you look forward to Thursdays with Dan Olofsky's and Mondays to start off the show, even though Shannon Sharp is in the house too, because he is a damn good analyst. We have nothing, nothing nice but damn else. good analysts on okay. this show. Okay, okay. and. You want a cookie? Here's the deal, okay? Let's get down to the nitty-gritty when we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys. You just brought up Dak Prescott. Excuse me, let me tell you something right now, Dan Olowski. This is the thing. This is why I could, that's why I couldn't hold back my laughter. Because you see, before we get to Dak Prescott, the last two years, what were we complaining about with the Dallas Cowboys? We were talking about penalties, were we not? Yeah, the two Dallas years ago for Cowboys, sure. yep. The Dallas Cowboys in back-to-back 12-5 and five seasons – committed 231 penalties, which was 26 more than any other playoff team. 26 more, okay? Look at that. Why is that relevant? What happened last week? Now, Trayvon okay. Diggs is out. I understand that. Oh, so you're going to tell me because Trayvon Diggs was out, that's why they committed 13 penalties? Is that why that happened? I mean, uh, uh, that, that's why it happened, right? Stop it. Okay, now we get to Dak Prescott. Um, Dan Olowski, last year, Dak Prescott, 34% of his passes were for 10 yards or more, due for 13 touchdowns but 11 interceptions, all right? This year, they've dialed that back. 
from 34 to only 26% of his passes, or for 10, more y- for 10 yards or more, complete just 41% of those passes. What I'm trying to say to you is that ultimately – you can give me digs, you can take digs out. God bless him, I hope he gets healthy. That's my man right there, okay? But the reality is, with or without him, it was going to come down to that. And it's still going to come down to that. So when you bring up another player like C.D. Lamb throwing the ball to himself, like, like, like Cooks or somebody throwing the ball at himself, like Gallup or somebody throwing the ball at himself, oh, no, 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 no. Dak got to get it to him. I agree. And we, and we both know. <laughs> we both know. <laughs> That's going to be a tough thing to Kimberly, have. can you get Go in ahead, here, Kimberly. please? Go so, ahead, Kimberly. I I just need, I listen, say. listen, Stephen. I just want you to watch what is and not what you want it to be. You oh. want to find so many holes with this Cowboys, def- uh, Cowboys team. But in week one, I do believe that you was making a little Stephen A list. And you was like, I can't. The Dallas Cowboys. I, I, even I can't say anything. Even I can't say anything. It's They're 40 to nothing. Oh, they look great. Oh, got to praise for Dak. Praise for the defense. Week two, same thing. And now all of a sudden, because they had a bad game, all of a sudden you want to say, see, I knew it. I knew it, these Cowboys. <laughs> are you accusing me? Are you accusing me of saying it after a loss? I haven't said it for 20, uh, for, for, for 20 because, years? Because you're not, you want, you want them to, you want them to fail. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. Only you the want fans. them to fail. Only the fans. So, so you make Michael a bad Bosses, game. No, never that, never that. Never that, never that. no, never that. Never, never, I just never hate that. these disgusting Cowboys fans. He oh, said they your cockroaches? Me. Oh, that little cockroaches. Oh, show the, oh, the sad face. 